<laughs> this is a big deal. This is my big break. That, that's a great way to start a show. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to IGN Game Scoop. I'm your host, Damon Hatfield. Joining me this week, of course, is Justin Davis. Scoop. We are joined by two very special guests this week. We are joined by former IGNers Ryan Geddes and Levi Buchanan. Hello. Hey. Good to be here. Longtime Game Scoop listeners uh, will, of course, know these two gentlemen. We'll know their operatic voices <laughs> quite well. Thank you. Uh, but if you're a newer, newer viewer, a newer GameScoop listener, maybe you don't know, uh, Ryan Geddes joined me. He was a, a news and features editor with me way back in the day. Probably 2000. The news desk. We manned the news desk. 2007 wow. is probably when you started? Yes, it was back 2007. In the day. Yeah. Uh, and Levi Buchanan, industry legend Levi Buchanan, <laughs> sure. before working at IGN, worked at Nintendo Power. Yeah. Yes, and then did, did that, did magazines, and then yeah, came over to IGN and handled mobile coverage from... 2003 on to, was it yeah. 11? Yeah. Also retro oh, game coverage. And retro game coverage Posted for a, a few years. Hosted a retro yes. game show Retrocity, called Retrocity, yes. Retrocity. Cult classic. Yeah. Yes. You can find those on, it the, was actually, dark, on the dark net. Yeah. <laughs> dark, <laughs> deep dark net. Yeah. It was actually many years after that show had stopped that I realized it was not called Retro City. <laughs> retro City. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Retrocity. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't oh, know. Oh, yeah. Because it That's was a retro Retrocity. <laughs> no. Uh, it's just interesting, uh, I feel like, I, Ryan, I was telling you before we recorded that uh, my very first day at the office was your last day. And so it was, hello, I'm Ryan, nice to meet you. I'll never see you. I think I you. asked you to get me coffee yeah, uh, at that moment. Were you, hey, boy. <laughs> please get me something. Garçon. And I actually, uh, Levi and I didn't overlap, but it was uh, you left and then I took over mm -hmm. your old beat and I'm doing something different now. So it's just sort of... Yeah, well, I think yeah, Levi actually uh, recommended you for the job. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. Sorry. Oops. Set up, now yeah. settle down. I don't know how they do things in Mary old England, <laughs> Ryan. Oh, uh, yeah, we guess we should uh, talk about where you are today. Uh, Ryan works at CCP Games, working on Eve Valkyrie. That's right. Uh, Oculus Rift launch title, VR game. Yep. Levi is under the EA umbrella, working at Chilingo. Yes, yes, so I'm the developer relations director over at Chilingo. And this week is the Game Developers Conference here in San Francisco. A bunch of game developers descend upon the city. That's, uh, that's true. So I knew they happened to be in town. So what I did is I held, I hid outside the bushes outside Moscone <laughs> Center, and when Ryan and Levi walked by, I, I, yeah. have, I, had a big <laughs> I had a big butterfly net, and I trapped him in it, and then I brought him back here to the studio and made them be on the show. Anyway, we have a great show for you this week. They're Ryan. blinking Morse code. Help yep. me. <laughs> what is right it now. That, uh, <laughs> yeah, the mentoring kind of. Uh, we're going we're gonna to talk about uh, Xbox and pl PlayStation 4. Pl Maybe playing nice together. We're going to play a video game 20 questions. Oh, yeah. Excellent. For sure. But first, PlayStation VR. It actually stands for PlayStation Virtual Reality. Mm. Oh, can I write mm. that? Do you have something gotcha. I can write that down? <laughs> just, just furiously okay. scribbling notes. Yeah. Uh, Virtual. This week, uh, we finally, we've been waiting a long time for a price and release window for that device. And now we know 399 US dollars mm -hmm. coming in October of this year. Awesome. Have you had a chance to process this information? I mean, I think it's awesome. I think uh, there we have a Vive in the office. I think I'm allowed to say that, and that's a really cool, impressive VR. The, like the, the a red dot shows up on his forehead. <laughs> swarm, swarm. <laughs> uh, no, the Vive's really impressive and does interesting things with like 3D space, with sort of the sensors that it places around your room, and obviously, you know, the Oculus is uh, you know coming out super soon, and that's a really viable, awesome platform. And now PSVR is here in you know, relatively inexpensive and is obviously going to have a big gaming em uh, uh, emphasis on it thanks to sort of the PlayStation backing. So it's really exciting and cool to see three sort of viable platforms that are all, you know, very much overlapping and doing similar things but coming at it from a slightly different direction. It's cool. It's a cool time to be sort of just plugged into this space. Well, yeah, this is definitely, uh, it, this is probably the biggest news story of GDC, this year's yeah. GDC. Mm -hmm. Well, and VR in general is just like, it's just it one of the only things that people kind of want to talk about. Yeah, it's true. Uh, $400. First of all, do you like that price tag? I think, it's, I, mean, I think it's great. I think people were really happy. I was at the Sony press event uh, where they announced it yesterday, and all the people I talked to were really just excited about the mm -hmm. price. I mean, it, it seemed to fit really well with where, where people were thinking. And, and the mood the in the room was good. I would say yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so, so like you're saying, there's now a kind of a broad range of... Uh, VR headsets yeah. that people can get into, and um, you know, I think Sony really gets VR, and they're excited about it. This isn't um, just another thing for them. They're really yeah. the people that I talk to there are really committed to it, and they're doing some really interesting, exciting, creative stuff. Mm. Yeah, 
It's good to see that there are so many avenues now for folks, if, they, if they're interested in VR, that now there are multiple levels in which they can jump in. They can do Oculus, they can do PlayStation. They can, then there's, there's mobile VR. You know, if mm -hmm. uh, you, there's, a, there's a device you already own, you can slide it in a headset. So it's great just to see so many entry points now for, for VR. As these sort of as these devices go from like sort of whispers and rumors to reality, and people get to demo them and have their hands on them, there's all kinds of interesting stuff that I kind of think I'm sort of curious to see how uh, the conversation evolves. Um, we've seen. I actually haven't had a PSVR headset on my head yet, but uh, Marty Sleva, IGN editor, um, use has used one, and he said that it's the most comfortable like feeling headset to put on its head, which is like one of those things like everyone's talking about specs and software mm -hmm. and you know hardware, uh, you know, but. But like that's such an important thing, like sure. how it feels if this right. is a device that you're going to be using all day, every day. That uh, you know, as more details like that trickle out, and maybe Sony, if it is, if that's true, if that's a very comfortable headset that uh, their competitors will have to up their game. You know, there's there's going to be a lot of interesting things happening over the course of this year. Yeah, that is one of the sort of questions that people are wondering about: is uh, how comfortable will VR be? How long will people be able to spend yeah. inside VR? How will it affect? So, people. interesting story about that. So, we're making Eve Valkyrie mm -hmm. for both Oculus Rift coming out on March 28th and then the launch title for PSVR as well in October. And we've been working on it for a while and, you know, excited to have it launch, build community and all that. But we, we have a, an alpha that's been running for, it just ended. Alpha's been running for a couple months. And we have a really dedicated small group of VR enthusiasts who've been helping us test the game. And, you know, we, we play Valkyrie for an hour or two and it's comfortable, it's, it's fine, it's no different than playing a regular 2D game. Uh, but we're thinking, is it just us because we're making it and we can't really see the forest for the trees? Mm -hmm. So we come in one day and pull the logs on the game and uh, it looks like somebody's played for five hours. Wow. And we're like, that has to be wild. Like That's just a mistake. In a row? Or? Yeah, just solid. <laughs> like, it has to be a mistake, right? The, 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 let's check that out. We check it out. In fact, the guy did play for five hours straight, and he was like, "It was totally fine, you know, no, no discomfort, hmm. you know, nothing." And and I think, as long as the hardware guys, your Oculus, Sony, HTC, and these guys are really focusing on that comfort level and making sure that the hardware, you know, feels just as good as playing a regular game, then hmm. it's going to be exactly the same as 2D games. How big of an advantage do you think is it is is the PlayStation 4 install base for Sony? It's up to, what, 36 million? Yeah. Uh, and you know if you buy a PlayStation VR, your PS4 will definitely run it. Mm -hmm. Not the same scenario for Oculus Rift and Vive. Uh, yeah. So how big of an advantage is that? I mean, I think that's a big deal. Um, we, I'm a fairly hardcore gamer. You know, I own all the, all the game consoles. Uh, I don't have a PC powerful enough to run you know, the, 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 the specs that you need to run an HTC Vive or an Oculus. Like, I could get one and I want to get one, like my computer's kind of old, but um, I think there's a lot of people in the same boat as me. Like if you have a PS4, couldn't be a more mainstream you know, gaming device, and if you have one, you're ready for VR in your home. Um, that's a big question for the, for the PC headsets. Mm. Yeah, I think it, it, it depends too on, on the audience, right? And you, you take Oculus, who are going for that high-end, early adopter, tech enthusiast, I want the next big thing. And in a way, it's no different than PC gaming versus console gaming. You have people out there who are always going to want the highest spec, push the hardware as far as it can go. I want to play Fallout 4, like, photorealistic versus a console gamer who doesn't care about all that stuff. They don't want to upgrade PCs. They don't want to fiddle around under the hood. They just want it to work. And it's kind of always been the way it is uh, since the advent of console gaming. And I think there's plenty of room for both of those audiences to coexist and, and find what they want out of the hardware. Mm. I just like that it's within reach now of an additional 30 plus million, million Absolutely. people. Absolutely. Sure. Very exciting. Uh, so, okay, if the Rift is coming this month, Vive is next month? Is that right? They start. Yeah. They at least start shipping out. No one knows. No one knows. Sure. Yeah. No. <laughs> uh, but, sure. but we know that PS, PSVR is supposed to come in October. Yeah. That's six or seven months from now. Mm -hmm. uh, is that is that too late of a start to give uh, its competitors that much of a lead? Mm. I, I don't think so. I mean, it's hard to say. Like, I'm not an industry analyst, but my sense is that if you wanted to get, like, if you plunk down the money for an Oculus Rift today, you're already not getting one in March, mm -hmm. and I actually don't know yeah. how far back ordered they are. Like. I don't feel like this is something that, you know, blam, the Oculus is here, it's everywhere. Like, I really do feel like it's going to be kind of a slow, trickling ramp up as the year progresses. And it's really kind of Q4 uh, when I think this battle is going to truly be fought anyway. So my sense is that Sony's not too late, but, um, you know, I totally concede that I could be proven very wrong on that mm -hmm. if, you know, Oculus and HTC get a really strong foothold over the summer. Yeah. yeah I mean, I would say it's early days, right? This, sure. I don't think anyone's looking at 
this year and saying this is the year that you know VR is in every household in America, right? So I think the guys who are you know the PC guys who are coming out a little bit earlier, um, you know, they have they're interested in building that. VR community on the PC, but they're not really the same audience. Uh, you know, if you've got a, a PS4 and you just want to plug something in, you're probably not considering uh, an Oculus Rift anyway, mm -hmm. and the other way around. So for us, it's great because we're launching a game on you know 28th of March, and then we get the rest of the year to build our community and listen to our players about what we want to put, what they want us to put in the game. We're going to be very open with them about like what our roadmap is. We want to hear from them, so we get to work out all the kinks fix any bugs we have, add in great new content, and then we're ready for another launch in October. So mm -hmm. for, the, for the game makers who are looking at both platforms, it's actually, it's actually really great, and it'll eventually end up being really good for players, I think, mm -hmm. too. I actually haven't given just on a personal level, like we use these headsets at work, and I know I want to get one, you know, one VR in my home, and I haven't made a decision yet, which is kind of interesting. I guess maybe I'm defaulting to PSVR since I you know, don't necessarily want to build a you know, $1,000 or $1,200 PC. Sure. Um, but that's a choice that I'll have to make soon for myself, I suppose. It'll be interesting to see. It's obviously very common for gamers to own more than one console. Mm -hmm. uh, but will they want to own more than one VR device? I don't, I don't know. That'll that's be interesting question. to see how that shakes out. That's yeah. a question. I mean, it is this middle ground between, like, you wouldn't want two HDTVs, besides for different rooms in your house or whatever. But, like, you buy a display, and, like, that's your display. But then you do have multiple consoles underneath it. And, like... A VR headset is kind of both. Like it's a display and a piece of gaming hardware mm -hmm. that has you know some exclusive software on it or exclusive hardware features. So it is kind of a middle ground between the two. Mm. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Levi, what was your first console? My first console. I'm going somewhere with this. <laughs> it's, I'm going to age myself here, but it is the Atari 2600. Well, that was. I mean, it was mine too. Yeah. My, my point was, you've been playing games for a long time. Yes. You've been following the industry. Let, let's say your whole life. Yes. <laughs> uh, we stand now at the precipice of. of uh, a tectonic shift potentially in yeah. video gaming. VR could be uh, a game changer. Uh, looking back, like what, what, what other like new advances in, in video game technology have been like this, where everyone's talking about, it, everyone's excited about this potential step into a totally new world for video games. Besides blast processing. Besides blast processing. Of I course. think prior to this, the biggest one would have been everything going online. That was definitely mm. something that just kind of there's a before which was, and an after. Which was. At least for console gaming, you started with the first uh, with the Xbox. Xbox Live, right? Yeah, Xbox Live. Well, Dreamcast was online as well. Yes. Yeah, there are definitely some like. <laughs> I, some, play some I played Fantasy Dreamcast, Star online. Yes. I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that shift onto Xbox Live, you think, and then you, we saw Nintendo and Sony sort of follow. Yeah, that is that was a I think that is a huge seismic shift is when when consoles got online. Yeah, I think too. We have talked about this a lot. You know, people working in VR. I think too, you can point to the three D graphics revolution. That happened mm. because before you know there was you know there was no Doom, there was no Quake, mm -hmm. nobody visualized in in 3D. And once that happened, I mean, you remember it was like some people were skeptical that that was sure. going to be a thing. <laughs> it, it, and it was like, does, do, do, do people really want that? Is it I think make... I'll stick with two dimensions. Yeah, <laughs> no, <laughs> thank you. But there was an argument not enough. only about that, but about is this viable? You know, how how can we push the? You know, if you want to push this level of graphics, you got to upgrade PCs, and are people really going to do that? But they did because it was compelling. I think it's the same argument for VR. Hmm. And that one kind of went in the hand uh, hand in hand with you know the move from cartridges to optical media mm -hmm. for gaming. I mean, those two things happen right around the same yep. time because That's in true. order to get all that information, they had to move off a cartridge. Mm -hmm. I miss cartridges. Yes. I love the space that they take <laughs> up. <laughs> so everyone seems pretty bullish on PSVR. Uh, it's got a friendlier, consumer friendlier entry point. Mm -hmm. uh, you got a big install base. Sony knows a lot about launching hardware. Uh, but to play devil's advocate, Technically, PSVR is an accessory, and I have a hard time thinking of a video game accessory, hardware accessory, that has been wildly successful in the entire history of console gaming. The yeah. Sega nope. Bass Fishing nope. fishing pole. No? No? no. Rob no, the Robot think. for the NES. <laughs> Not Rob the Robot. Samba, Not your Samba, Samba, Samba. Samba. Oh, Samba. No? What about the track and field pad for the Not the track and field pad. The activator. Not the power glove. Not the power pad yeah. that you ran on. Like, none of it. But I think there was uh, the Wii Balance Board. The Wii Balance Board was like, maybe, maybe that was like one And the original exception. Kinect had a huge mm -hmm. penetration rate. Yeah, and then it, like, <clears> but like no one... I think that it's no a good. Love the connect. It, you know? It's a good question, but you think about w what of those per those peripheries, peripherals, or accessories was more expensive than the console that it That's went also with. Also, point. And it, I think, 
it's tempting to think about PSVR as an accessory or a peripheral yeah. for the PSVR, but or for the PS4. But I think if you ask Sony, in fact, if you listen to their message and what yes. they're saying, it's a that. new <laughs> it's a new medium for them. It, they're, they're, they're talking platform. about as yeah. a completely new platform, yeah. and, and it's it is confusing to consumers. But I think the more people start talking about the power of it and what it can really offer, everyone will kind of stop thinking about yeah. it as a thing you think of as a peripheral of the PS4 and more of a new technology that's powered by the PS4, which yeah, is big exactly. Different. And this yeah. is actually where I was going. I think Sony is at least thinking of it as a platform, mm -hmm. and Sony definitely has a lot of experience launching successful platforms. Mm -hmm. They've launched four successful video consoles, one successful handheld. The Vita was uh -huh. like the Vita's like the one like, you know, that didn't really hit. It didn't land. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it, it, you haven't brought it up yet. Maybe you're going to get into this in a minute. But uh, the PSVR <laughs> does require the PlayStation camera, but it doesn't come with yeah, it. Yeah, but it doesn't. So it's four hundred dollars, but like kind of not really. Um, yeah. Which I totally get even because with there's millions of cameras already sold, and you don't want people to have yeah. to have a second camera. And like I, I understand it, but like the, that price does come with an asterisk. Uh, same with. There are games that uh, don't require the move controllers, but you kind of do need them, like, yeah. realistically. It is a little bit more, probably a little bit more expensive than $400, but even with the added expense, it's still the most cost-effective yeah, VR sure. option. Yeah, and there'll be, there'll be all kinds of bundles and stuff on the holiday that'll alleviate that concern, mm -hmm. I'm sure. Um, and I would also expect, did they, did they announce, um, they didn't announce like a whole hardware, like get a PS4, get the VR, mm, get the... I think, I think there might, was a bundle. They? Okay. Yeah. I think I saw some bundle news. Bundru news coming out today. Sure. Uh, now, everyone is talking about VR. It's, it is the talk of the town yes. <laughs> here at GDC. We got an email from uh, one of our uh, viewers, listeners, Paul. And he says, now that we find... He emailed us at the email address, gamescoop at IGN.com, just like you can. He says, now that we finally know the price and release date of PSVR, I expect to hear even more games and features announced between now and launch. For many, exciting times lie ahead. But... For the folks in the PlayStation community that, for whatever reason, do not plan on getting into VR, do you think this, is gro this growing focus may actually alienate them? For 2016, at least, there are some huge conventional games still coming, Uncharted 4, Last Guardian, Horizon Zero Dawn, so it does not seem like Sony's first-party studios have all switched over to making VR titles yet. But what if the landscape is completely different in 2017? I think it'll be very telling to see what Sony Santa Monica and Sony Ben's next big games are. His main question is, does this focus on VR alienate more gamers are just more interested in a more traditional experience. Uh, maybe. Um, yeah, I mean, every, every first-party studio that's working on a VR game, if you don't care about VR, every studio that's working on a VR game is one studio not working on something you care about, right? Like, that's a real concern. Um, the interesting, it's sort of a challenge and opportunity for VR is that it, until you try it for yourself, like, you just can't, like, most people that don't dig it just haven't had a chance to try it yet. Yeah. And so... It is that compelling and that cool, and it was something that I was skeptical about. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I just don't know that I care about that. And then you have a real, you know, you play budget cuts or some other really compelling VR demo, and you're like, oh shit, like this is like this is this. It becomes the thing once you get a chance to try it. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know. Um, it's it's tough to say whether if someone's not into VR, um, I guess I would kind of want to dig a little bit more into why. Hmm. Huh? Well, I think that's fair. I think it's, <clears throat> it, you know, I, I would say to Paul not to worry too much because if VR, you know, ends up not being a thing that everybody wants right away, then the studios aren't going to focus on it, right? So if it becomes so compelling, which I believe it will, that everybody's going to want it, then you're going to see studios giving more and more attention to it. So I think it's something that the market's going to just decide over time, but I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't think that all the big studios out there are going to jump on this right away. I think mm -hmm. it's going to take some time. Um, you know, certain Certain developers out there have really latched onto it and decided this is part of the future and that's where they want to be, um, and that's great. But you know, not everyone's going to do it. Mm. Do it right away. Well, Levi, uh, VR gaming on PC and console is launching this year. Mm -hmm. Should, certainly, mobile VR has a big future and will play a big part in uh, uh, making it making VR a real mainstream thing. Let's say, well, there are right now hundreds of millions of VR devices technically out there right now in everyone's pocket. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Android phones, iOS phones, they all work in these off-the-shelf, you know, solutions that you can put up on your face, whether it's, you know, Google Cardboard or Mattel's got their Viewmaster. So if it's something that maybe you need, a, uh, need to try out to see if it's something that's, that's going to be relevant to you, 
that's a great entry point. You know, I talked about earlier is that that is a, a, an affordable entry way in to see if it's something that you're going to like or something that you're interested in. And it does usually take one really good, really positive experience to decide if VR is for you. And for me, and it's good that you're here, is it was playing Valkyrie. And it, for me, it wasn't, I mean, the whole experience was neat. It was the looking around, being able to target ships with my eyes, and it was so fascinating that it worked. But the, the moment for me was when I looked down and realized I saw my, I, my body was the pilot's body, and that was the moment this thing clicked with me. I was like, yes, this is a real thing that I really want to be a part of. There's a, uh, I, I would have been more concerned about this a decade ago, but as I've said on GameScoop before, everything old is new again, and nothing goes away forever, and there's more, you know, 2D games on Steam now than probably ever yep. before. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, I used to have kind of a lot of fear. I really, really like 2D platformers. I really like 3D mascot platformers, and it's sad to see stuff go away, and I was excited about the new stuff, but, you know, there was a period where you couldn't really get the stuff that you wanted all the time, and that, I f feel like that period's over. Um, you know, even if VR is everywhere in a decade, and that's really what, you know, sort of the future of video games is, there is still going to be a massive group of people making Metroidvanias and making, you know, games like Stardew Valley on PC. Yes. And Stardew Valley. I know, right? Oh, yeah, you guys should totally geek out about Stardew Valley. the only thing I play anymore. <laughs> I so, I mean, I don't feel like I can bounce between, like, right now, the games that I'm playing are Stardew Valley and The Division, and that's really so illustrative of, and some mobile games, like, that's illustrative of what video games in 2016 is. Mm -hmm. And in a couple years, is it going to be really flashy, insane VR games? And then sort of, uh, you know, interesting 2D, or, you know, traditional 2D or 3D games? Yeah, totally, we're going to get that mix. Yeah, For, you I know, until totally the end agree. of time, we're going to get that mix. Yep, I totally agree. I think the only thing about VR that I'm sad about is that it's happening now. I, there's, a, there's a part of me that wished this had happened in, when you in my were, gaming career hmm. 20 years younger, because this is the first time where I really begin to kind of think about my age and where it exists in video games and the idea that look at what's happening now at my age and that I'm trying to think of all the stuff that I will potentially miss, you know, mm -hmm. in 40, 50 years of, of time. Ooh. I, yeah, I, I'm sure I, they're going to have... We're going to crowd... We're going to freeze you. <laughs> Please. Yep. We'll wake you up. <laughs> Thank and, you. Uh, <laughs> Say, video games are crazy now. <laughs> and you put them back under for another 100 years. Yeah. Can we just trade him back and forth? Like, you can keep him for a while, his yeah. carbonite frame, yeah. and yeah, I keep him for a while. Use yeah. me as a coffee table. Oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah. I just want to be useful. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I want out of yeah. this life. <laughs> uh, okay, another th question I was wondering is, uh, you know, VR is such a, uh, an exciting topic to people. It's dominating the conversation so much. There are two players that are not a part of the conversation, Microsoft mm. and Nintendo. Uh, and I wonder, if they, do they, like Paul was wondering about, uh, traditional gamers feeling alienated, do they stand at a, a risk of being alienated? Microsoft has HoloLens, but that's still years away. Nintendo has Inex, but who knows what that's going to be? They've given no indication that they're interested in VR technology at all. Hmm. So yeah. it's like if that's if this is a big, exciting new uh, dimension for video games, like where do they where, do they not need to be a part of it? I mean, in my judgment, and again, like I'm not a professional analyst. You know, I don't I don't sort of sit in on the strategy meetings for these companies. I think that Microsoft's yet, yet uh, sure. Um, <laughs> Microsoft is in a tighter spot than Nintendo is. You know, Nintendo's always marched to their own beat and sort of, uh, you know, ran on the strength of their own brands and, you know, their, the quality of their software. Um, I, I, I don't anticipate there being a concern there. Um, if everyone moves this way, Nintendo kind of likes to be zagging when mm -hmm. everyone else is zigging. Um, Microsoft, on the other hand, if VR does turn out to be a big hit, yeah, I mean, I have to imagine that they're sweating it a little bit if they don't have, you know, some sort of solution coming in the, in the near, you know, sort of middle term, I mm -hmm. guess. I think if I, you, know, you, can, you can imagine, you can put yourself in Microsoft's position, right? And imagine that they might be a little bit gun shy about something like this after you know, their experience with Kinect. Hmm. Great technology, some great games, but you know, it didn't end up quite being the taking over the world advantage that they thought it might have been. You are the controller. What? What is that? And then, <laughs> and then the whole like media, is it a media center? Is it a game device thing that they mm -hmm. went through? Which was, you know, it's a whole different conversation. But I can see how, you know, they might want to sit back a little bit and say, you know, how's this going to play out? Do we want to jump right in or do we want to be strategic about this? So, um, jump in was also a Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's tricky that uh, Kinect sold. I don't know how many millions. I mean, millions and yeah. millions and millions of Kinects. And so, in that sense, you know, an overwhelming success, yeah. right? But still didn't quite manage to break through and reach that, I don't even know how you would describe it, that threshold of like, well, this has just, you know, become a thing. Like, it didn't, it didn't quite reach that level. 
you know, despite, so it's like, what does success look like for any sort of peripheral or new platform or something that gloms onto an existing platform? But I think the question that he's asking is interesting, right? Because he's talking about alienation. Like, are, are, are gamers mm. going to be alienated? Oh, yeah, the movie Alien Nation. Yes, let's he's talk about the movie James Con. Alien and Mandy Nation. <laughs> really. Wasn't it also a TV, a TV yeah, series? Yeah. Was that the one where they were, like, allergic to dish soap or something? Like they, no, they, they, they drank sour milk. They drank sour milk <laughs> to get drunk. Yeah. Like okay. That was, like, their, like, alcohol. And there was some other thing. They had, like, blue blood. <laughs> yeah. And we're going to roll a clip of that. Yeah. Right yeah. Now. <laughs> you brought a clip of it. Like, yeah, about a clip of it. Let me set this up for you. <laughs> uh, but, no, his question is interesting. I think if I was just, you know, a general gamer, not connected to the game industry and all that, and I was watching all this stuff about VR, I might have this question of, is this for me? Is this not for me? I can't try it. None of my friends are trying it. Nobody that I know personally has probably ever tried it. So you're counting on, you know, this whole this cloud of information about VR to tell you whether you should care about it or not. So I think mm -hmm. the platform companies and the you know, game developers and publishers and everybody have a lot of work to do to kind of make sure that people understand you know, what this is and why they need it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's a challenge for us at IGN as well. Like we're kind of figuring out how to illustrate and display this content and even from like a nuts and bolts perspective of how to even get video out so that we can capture yeah. video footage at all. And then from a more like conceptual perspective of like what kind of coverage makes sense. Um, Have you thought about going directly to people's houses individually <laughs> one by one? And not I just shout at people on the street. <laughs> Hey, hey, PlayStation VR is three ninety nine. dollars <laughs> uh, It is hard because it is, it is a completely, and I'm not just, and I know I'm, I'm close to it, so I'm not just saying it here, but it is a transformative thing when you, when you try it out and you get it for the first time. And you can't really explain that to anybody. anybody. And people who just you know, are, are hearing about it on you know, GameScoop or reading about it are probably just sick of hearing about it, right? It's like, no. I'm I want to get this, I, I want to get my hands on it and play it. I think that's what they're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Levi, what do you think about Nintendo's current challenges with the Wii U and launching a new console? It's a little, uh, uh, we have, don't really know what it is yet. We know it's coming, at least information's coming this year. Tell us, Levi. <laughs> <laughs> I think as always. Just as like a, as a Nintendo fan. Sure, as a Nintendo fan. Uh, I'm always excited to see what, what they're up to. Um, some of my favorite games over my entire lifetime have been Nintendo games. So no matter what, I'm always looking forward to seeing what they're, what they're going to do next. Nintendo is always full of surprises. They always have a quality threshold for themselves um, that is heartening to see and usually results in some, some amazing stuff. So whatever they have announcing this year, you know, I'm definitely you know, looking forward to... Uh, Definitely looking forward to finding out. Mm. Do they have challenges? The whole industry has challenges. But the whole industry also has a bunch of opportunity as well. Mm. Nintendo is pretty resilient. Um, I actually love the GameCube. I love that controller. But that was not an especially popular console. It was sort of the bottom in terms of declining console popularity for like two or three consoles in a row. Mm. And they came back and were bigger than ever, right? So it's like the NX, like... Like I, you know, the Wii U is a massive flop, but I don't think I don't think the past predicts the future, especially when Nintendo is concerned. Hmm. Um. All right, there actually is other news besides from VR this week, though, that needs to be discussed. Indiana Jones, right? Young, Indiana young Jones Han Solo. Five <laughs> and Young Han Solo. Young Han Solo. Wow. Uh, how, how how did your audition go, Levi? It went uh, poorly. <laughs> Turns out they wanted a young Han Solo. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, we're talking about uh, Xbox has introduced that cross-network play is a, is a thing that is possible on Xbox One, meaning like cross-platform between uh, Xbox One and PlayStation 4. Players on Xbox can play online with those on the same game on PS4. The first game to support this is Rocket League. Uh, what I wonder is, uh, so Sony had, had, a, had a, a response to this. Maybe it was a little cagey. They said, PlayStation, ha PlayStation has been supporting cross-platform play between PC on several titles, starting with Final Fantasy XI on PS2 PC back in 2002. We would be very happy to have the conversation with any publishers or developers who are interested in cross-platform play. They stopped short of actually addressing Microsoft mm -hmm. and, and addressing the potential of uh, having cross-platform play with an Xbox One game. But what I wonder is, uh, I, I'm sure there are numerous business and technical reasons why Xbox One and Pla Play PlayStation 4 games don't play together. But from the consumer's perspective, is there any reason why all games shouldn't? No. All right. I think it'd be great. I think it's a, I think it's a great announcement from Microsoft. Yeah, I mean, strictly from a con consumer perspective, absolutely. Like, it makes 
people don't understand or don't care. Like, my friend has Call of Duty, I have Call of Duty, maybe we can play together, maybe we can't because we're on different platforms. That makes no sense. Right? Mm. Um, you're completely right that there is significant technical and um, cultural is not the right word, but just, you know, I don't know. Like, these companies don't have a reputation of playing nice and, you know, uh, cooperation. So uh, there are major hurdles there. But, yeah, strictly from a consumer perspective, uh, totally good news all around, right? I think if you were to ask the you know, Sony and Microsoft and what, what their issues with that might be. It's probably, some of it's technical and some of it's about how the systems work together. And some of it's also just making sure their customers are taken care of and that, mm -hmm. you know, when you connect a, another community to your community, just making sure that, you know, your customers are, you know, cared for and not, not you, know, you, you can control what's happening between yeah. these communities. Yeah, and I, there's I, I mean, I kind of can't even imagine, yeah, that. the logistical, I, I kind of don't understand, like, abuse reporting yeah. and even yeah, like, displaying of gamer least, tags or display names and, and invites to different parties yeah. and chat, like, just, just even from, I'm non-technical, but, like, just on the surface, I'm like, just feels almost insurmountable. Like, I feel like we're years away from... Have you seen the movie Hackers with Angelina Jolie? <laughs> sure, we'll it's just, like that. It's like cute, it. giant cubes floating around mm -hmm. in space. It they just gotta hack into the mainframe and yep, it'll be if fine. If they do that, it's fine. Everything's fine. Yeah, I guess it's easy to, to imagine a world where all games on all platforms play nice together and that sounds great. But yeah, actually now that I think about it, you, you bring up a lot of really logistical challenges. Well, thank you, Damon. That would have to be overcome. Yeah, I mean, I, I hope that it happens, and I believe that it will happen. I think that these companies compete, compete, you know, Microsoft and Sony compete on a lot of really important vectors, and I don't think, you know, sort of segregated uh, multiplayer communities needs to be one of those or should be one of those, that that's even good for anybody. And, um, and they'll listen to players, too. Yeah. If players are clamoring for this and really saying this is what we want and, and really hammering that home, they'll, yeah. they'll listen. So I think the bigger an issue it becomes, the, the more you'll see it happen. All right, now is the time on GameScoop when we play Video Game 20 Questions. <laughs> this is where you, the viewers and listeners, uh, suggest a game. I'm the only one on this panel that knows what the game is, and my friends and colleagues have 20 yes or no questions with which to guess this mystery game. And our suggestion this week comes from Paul, again. All right. Don't screw I, don't. I don't think it's the same Paul. I think it's a different Paul. Don't okay. screw us, Paul. Paul the second. Should I start? You may start. I normally start with a goofy question. But I'm worried about you two. <laughs> In what way? You're just new to the game. Yeah, we, I'm a total new Goof it up, Justin. It's I'm an, probably more likely to like overuse the number of questions. I'm that guy. Like, yeah. Have I really asked 10 already? <laughs> Sorry. Yes, 11. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, um, okay. Uh, do, you play, do you play as a human? Are you a human being? Uh, I, I, I do not think you are technically a human <laughs> What are you in doing this to me? game. What are you doing to me, Damon? Like... I do not think you would. You are a human. Can we, can we unpack that? Is this the way it's like? Is this <laughs> yes. what you I'm to trying, with? This I'm is trying to be fair. I'm, try, I'm trying not to mislead you. Human. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Maybe humanoid, okay. but not a human. Okay. Are you a robot? No, it's not an actual robot? question. <laughs> robot? <laughs> <A> robot. <laughs> All right, we go down the line. Okay. Who next? Uh, is this a... S and they have to be yes or no questions, right? Yeah. Is this a science fiction game? Uh, I don't think you would consider it a science fiction game, no. Okay. Did this game come out after the year 2000? No. Okay. Did this game come out after the year 1990? Yes. Okay. All right, so we got so a decade. Added, yeah. We're in the 90s. Mm. Okay. Was this a Nintendo game? No. That's five questions. Was this a 3D game? It's no. Good, it's a good question. Okay. The answer is no. Okay. Okay, okay. Uh, we know it's not Echo the Dolphin. Well, so we know it's Vector Man. It's pretty, <laughs> there's a decent sized chance it's Vector Man. Uh, no, but it's not a Nintendo game. But I guess I'm unclear on what that means. Is that not, does that mean not on a Nintendo platform? I meant was it playable on a Nintendo platform. The answer remains no. Okay. 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 Uh, is this playable on a Sega platform? Yes. Okay. It might. So a 2D human. Esque humanoid. Yes. Human human humanoid. <laughs> okay, so is it my question? Yes. Oh god. Um, okay. Did this was this a side scrolling game? Yes. Hmm. Okay. Is this game based on was this game based on an existing license? No. Okay. I think I you can guess. Yeah. I mean, is the developer still in business? Uh, it's Vector Man. It's Vector Man. <laughs> I 
It might be. It might not be Nick. I don't. I find that's my answer to everything. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Me too. Just in life. I do not think this developer is still in operation today. That's ten questions. I don't even know how to narrow it down to, mm. to, to determine whether it's Vector Man or not. <laughs> mm. Was this the only game in this series? Yes. It's okay. not Vector Man. <laughs> Unless Damon forgot about Vector Man 2. <laughs> <laughs> Crap. Well, I wasn't even thinking of alternatives. Alternatives. Rystar? Is he humanoid? <laughs> <laughs> Anthropomorphic. Yeah. <laughs> Can we sum up? Okay. Yeah, we're let's at. let's let's we take got a stock. Humanoid, in the '90s. In the mm -hmm. '90s, Sega. playable on Sega, but we don't know it's Sega exclusive. But not playable on a Nintendo platform. No, no but it could have been an arcade game as well. Okay. Yeah. 2D, mm -hmm. side scroller. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but was this game made by Sega? Would you, how, was, how did, you, was Sega the developer? No. Because well, he already answered that that they're not in business anymore. He doesn't know if the no, developer is in business anymore. Oh, my mistake! Crap! Oh, that was a rookie mistake. <laughs> <laughs> that was really bad. <laughs> Pull it, pull it together. <laughs> Come on, man. You have eight questions. <laughs> I'm gonna blame this on you. Screw up. Under ten, under ten questions. Okay. Let's... All right. Who's? who's yeah, that was a dumb question. question. Hmm. This is the '90s. Yeah. So it was the only game. Oh, well, that's the other thing. It was the only game. There was no other game in this. Mm -hmm. It's a one-off. Oh yeah. What, no are the, what are the systems that split the '90s then? There's, there's Genesis a, and Saturn. Saturn. Yeah, but it was 2D. And and well, but there's Genesis, Saturn, and Dreamcast. Yeah, and split Game the Gear. '90s. But we're talking about Sega Machines. Boy. Game Gear. Sega Could Game Gear. Could have been Gear. a Dreamcast okay, fair game. enough. Fair enough. Okay. <laughs> it's not... It, well, yeah, but we know... I mean, we could narrow it down further. I yeah, mean, we, we could just say, is it a Sega Genesis game? That might be worth a question. Lay it on us. Is it a Sega Genesis game? Yes. Okay. okay. Whew. Was Altered Beast a Genesis game? Yes. yes. What did you play as? Uh... A man a beast. Bear. <laughs> a <laughs> man beast humanoid. But that was, bear, maybe, maybe that was by Sega. A oh, yeah, right. um, That's what's throwing me off. The developer question is what's throwing me off. Because it's like, I was like, oh, well, there was that Aladdin game, but that was Capcom. They're still around. And, and Aladdin is a human. Well, who's not around anymore? I mean, Acclaim. What was, were there any Genesis Acclaim side scrolling? Acclaim's gone. There's a does your, does your character wear a hat? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, one of these days, the answer is going to be yes. No, your character does gonna, not wear a hat. We're going right. to blow the doors off I might this thing. Blow, I might blow a question here. But well, you, could, you know, you can't do any worse. Than <laughs> Are you pointing do, the finger at me? No, I'm, do they wear a scarf? Uh, <laughs> was this was it melee combat or shooting combat? Yeah, you got a yes or no question. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Was it a melee a melee focused combat game? Uh, okay, now hold on. Are, are you defining melee as strictly like hand to hand combat or sword play? Okay, then the answer is no, not melee. Okay, so that's fifteen questions. I don't like it. I don't like this one. Bit. But <laughs> to be to be fair, it is a little bit of a gray area. But no, it is not strictly a melee game. A I'm, I'm still unclear on genre. You said <clears throat> side scroller, and I've been picturing a platformer. Two D side scroller. I feel like do, do is we it need like to a brawler? Do we need to know more about mm. this character? Like like if we know who the hero of the game is, if we can. I mean, because all we got is. But it's not sci-fi. Okay. Does this game does this game take pl place in the United States? Does this? Well, no. Let me. Does the game? Is it? Take it away, Justin. <laughs> does the game take place on Earth? Is that a good question? That's sure. If that will help you but narrow the, it down. No, does it help yes. you? Not really. Okay. Then wait, forget it. Forget okay, it. Wait. Forget it. So with fifteen, with five questions to go, let's take stock. Has anyone ever lost this game? Are yes. we about to be the a nineties? We often lose. Sega Genesis, Genesis game starring a humanoid. <sighs> That is a side scroller. Uh, isn't really a melee combat game. Okay, so, okay. so it can't be like a ninja. And type. Developers. the developer is no longer in business, to okay. my knowledge. Nin ninja? Ninjas are. It can't melee. be. They're 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 melee. Yeah. It has to be a shooting kind of game. We could, we're assuming. I mean, it could be a spaceship. It could be a side scroll. It could be a, a shoot 'em up. Oh, Damon wouldn't do us like that. How do you know? How can he you might. trust him? He might. <laughs> I'm trying to think of some of those goofball side scrolling shooters that didn't have spaceships in them. Yeah. Like he the, got us pretty good. Any like Japanese the, stuff? Yeah, like the Parodius stuff. It won't like be that. any of that. Okay. We go, we, we Was go, there like we a go Gundam broader, We go broader than that. Okay. It's like, I wouldn't pick something that you guys would never guess. Okay. <laughs> you <laughs> Says did, you. <laughs> you did pick Blaster Master once. Yeah. You should know Blaster Master. Oh, that, was, I found, that was one of those times where I find myself screaming at yeah. the, the, the eyes. No, we're being screamed at. Blaster Master. We're being screamed at right now. <laughs> like a stanza sure. running Sorry. out of the bathroom. Save Handelay. <laughs> <laughs> no. And you want to be my latex salesman. <laughs> no, we're in real trouble right now. 
I okay. Can, There's an obvious question we're missing here. Yeah. Something obvious. Could we ask questions around? Okay. Do, are we in? So we, it is Genesis. We know it's a yeah. game. Yeah, we narrowed that. Down. Um, do we need to find out if it's a launch title? Like, would that have? Would no. that help you guys? Because I don't. That would. Well, like, launch title would immediately narrow it down to okay. about eighteen games, or it would blow it open <laughs> to nine thousand. those, how comfortable <laughs> are you with the eighteen games to know? Like, you could at least know you're picking from that. Like, how would that help us or not? Does this game? Um, does this game recognizably take place on Earth? No. Okay. okay. I don't think so. I don't know what that does for us. <laughs> And I just, because I'm worried about, you know, I don't want you to burn a question. Uh, the Genesis launched in 1989. Ah. So, the so launch, it's not a launch it, it game. Okay, launch gotcha. Okay. But That's it could be early days. Um, humanoid. I feel like that's the part that's going to unlock this, is mm. if we can narrow down what that character is. Well, we also know they don't wear a hat. Would male, female help? <laughs> yeah, so there sure. is that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Is this character male? Yes. Okay. Oh, could it be like we're like flashback on both consoles, Three. or like Alone in the Dark, or some of those? But those are dark. but those are human. I mean, those are oh, those, those are, are human characters. Very human. They're like act or Yeah, those are all human beings. Human beings. Three questions left. I man. You definitely have human attributes. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to think. Is it you know because you have these like humanoid characters like say Dynamite Hetty or Decap Attack, where wow, it's a uh, <laughs> goodness gracious. It's a character with arms and legs, but yeah. it's not a person. Rayman. But he's got floppy ears. He's a rabbit, ears. right? Isn't no, you that's know. the rabbits. The oh, actual right. Rayman, yeah. he's like a dog thing. I don't know what Rayman I'm trying to think is. You know, he's got floppy dog ears. <laughs> he's like and like a dog Pluto? nose. Or like Goofy? Yeah. Well, but it doesn't take place on Earth. That's true. That's, I mean, that question is interesting, too. Like, what, the, it's, but it's not sci-fi? It doesn't take well, place on Earth, but it's not And that's why I'm, try, I'm trying to think of games Earth. like uh, Rocket Knight Adventures oh, or a, a decap yeah. attack, like, you know, like things like that. Super Mario Brothers doesn't take place on Earth, right? Right. And it's not sci-fi. Right. Uh, this is around the time in 20 questions where I usually just give up. Can one of us call Sam? <laughs> <laughs> Phone to Sam. Jared? <laughs> yeah. You have three questions left. You gotta bring it home. All right, what do we, what do we got? We got some good, we got some good Winter razors. We gotta, we gotta like, bring it home. Some razor okay. blade questions. Um, <clears throat> were there, were there, like, is this a game that we would have, that there were, like, commercials for that we would recognize and remember? Commercials, like, on TV? Yes. I don't think so. Okay. okay. Well, 18. Was the developer Japanese? Yes. That's a good question. We should have asked that, like, 10 questions ago. So now I'm you have one to really question oh, left. Oh, Some of those platformers where you did have, you know, like a decap attack or dynamite heady or rocket knight. Japanese developers. Or, but rocket knight is Konami, question. so it's, yeah. it's not that. Because um, they're still in business. Well, who was dynamite heady and uh, Yeah, what uh, Japanese but those are, those are developers, developers were those not are second, in business anymore? Yeah. Oh, man. Are you sure it's not one of those bullet hell games? Pretty sure. Like... So humanoid, 2D, Genesis. No, we're hosed. We're hosed. G game We've over. We've got one question left, don't we? Yeah. yeah you have to it. guess the game or it's over. And you all die. Levi, we're going to leave this to you. You know your Genesis games better than I do. Oh, God. Let's see. We're in trouble. Don't mess this we up. Are, we, are, we are in very, <laughs> we're in complete trouble People are now. so upset with us right now. Yes. I'm sorry about this. Someone is screaming. <laughs> I regret all the jokes and japes from the earlier the questions, all the spoofs and See, goofs. This is why you don't goof on 20 questions. Oh, man. So my, my personal guess what? is is Decap Attack. Okay. Judging by by some of that stuff, because it's it's a it's not sci-fi, but it is it a the humanoid criteria. character that does attack with projectiles. It is a Genesis game. It's the 90s. That developer may not be around anymore. Sure. Let's do it. Let's do it. Going with Decap Attack? Yeah. You were so close. It was Dynamite Heady. Oh! <laughs> you said it twice. That was yeah. a runner-up question. That was it's a like Beetlejuice if I said it one more time. Developed yeah. by Treasure, oh, which I don't yeah. think is around, around anymore. They? Treasure, I don't think. Yeah. I mean, not to my knowledge. Oh, that's sad mm. if so. Published by Sega in 1994. Wow. Single-player platformer. You throw your head, and you yeah. can like equip different types of heads. Oh. Yeah. But he has a head. He's humanoid. Don't think it takes place on planet Earth. Not sci-fi. We got pretty close. We did get close. I we was, we I, got into the head chucking yeah, neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Into Capitag is also, although I don't know who the developer on that one is. I don't know if it's Japanese or not. It's, it is a Japanese <clears throat> game, but it was then, like, Decap Attack, it got reskinned when it came 
mm. when it came here. Interesting. I'm surprised we got that close. Yeah, I'm, that I'm, was... I, that's respectable. That's a respectable. I'll mix. take that. I'll take that silver. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought for sure you would get Dynamite Heady because it's like a classic Genesis yeah. side scroller. Okay, mm. Treasure, like everything they made on Genesis was gold. Yeah. Honestly, uh, because I don't know for certain if Treasure is out of business yet. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I what was their last game that I made think, it? I think you might have dirty dogged us on that. Oh, right. I don't think <laughs> you, if I had told you they were still in development, then you would have got it like that. <laughs> yeah. Let's let the internet decide. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll look it up. I don't know what Treasure's last game would be. Yeah. But but they could still be making, like, small little games. I mean, just sure. I, would, I hope they're still. I do not wish them to be out of I, business. Yes. <laughs> wow. That was intense. That was good on Paul. Whew. Yeah. Good stuff, Paul. That's how I do it. Uh, Ryan and Levi, I'm so glad you could join us for Thank you. It's so great to be here. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Uh, hopefully it won't be another five years before <laughs> you guys are back on. Uh, that is all the scoops we have for you this week, though. Remember, you can always reach us at the email address, gamescoop.igen.com. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Levi. My name is Damon. This is IGN Gamescoop. We're out. <laughs>